3921, week 2, lecture 3. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the single pulse generator, but in signal tap. So let's open up the project in Quartus. And last time what we did was we looked at this in models and that is we tested the, we functionally simulated the design, right? But today, like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to use something called as signal tap, okay? So signal tap, which is, can be found under tools, is an in-system logic analyzer. So it is a design, if you will, that you download with your, with your design, okay? And you can use it to probe different signals. So a couple of points. Since signal tap runs with your design on the FPGA, it's going to take up memory, okay? So you can either sample for, if you want to sample for a long number of clock cycles, you can sample a small number of signals or for the same clock cycle, if you want to sample a large number of signals, you have to do it, sorry, for the same clock frequency, if you want to sample a large number of signals, you have to do it for a shorter amount of time. Is that clear? As of now, you can't, I know Altera is working on this. Signal tap cannot access external memory on your boards. Like let's say signal tap could access the SD RAM on your DE1, you have 120, no, not 120, 64, 8 megabytes of SD RAM, okay? So as of now, it can't do it. I know Altera is working on it, but anyway. So one of the first things you need to configure for signal tap is your clock. Okay, your sampling clock. And probably the most important thing in signal tap is, oh, let's see, uh, we'll do, do a signal tap next lecture. And that's this lecture. For signal tap, we need a sampling clock that is at least twice the frequency of the maximum uh, frequency in your design. This is the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem, okay? So in our case, we need to look at a pulse that is 20 nanoseconds or 50 megahertz wide. Hence, we need to have a sampling clock that is at least 100 megahertz, okay? So on the way we are gonna do that is we're gonna use a face lock loop, which is basically a charge pump to pump up 50 megahertz to 100 megahertz. Okay, I'll try to go to 200. And I think max you can go to three, 300, but let's say you're sending the clock out to one of your GPIO pins, your GPIO may not support such a high clock frequency, okay? On the FPGA, you can kind of do anything you, what you want, but as you take it off chip, you might run into issues. So let me do that uh, signal tap uh, PLL. So to get the PLL, you go into tools, uh, we use the mega wizard, okay? So let's create a new custom mega function, IO, it's under IO, okay, and there it is, Altera PLL. And there are four face lock loops on your Cyclone 2, yeah? You can if it's there. Like, whatever is here you can do, right? But some of them are not, uh, for example, PLL reconfiguration is, you can't dynamically reconfigure the PLL on Cyclone 2 FPGs. On Cyclone 4s, I think you can. You can use whatever is here, right? If it makes uh, your life easier. But just because it's here doesn't mean it's like easy to use. You have to really understand what's going on. If not, it doesn't work. Okay. So let's call the signal tap. Oops, and I can't spell. Signal tap PLL.VHD. Make sure, obviously, it's under the same project folder. Give it some time, at least on my computer. All right. 
uh, what is the input clock? What is the frequency of the input clock? It's going to be 50 megahertz for us. Okay. Next, uh, create an asynchronous reset. Uh, create a locked output. I'm not going to do that. You can create a locked output. I think it takes around like 10, nona, 10 nanoseconds for the output to lock in phase with the input. It's pretty fast. Okay. Um, let's see. Clock switch over. None of this is necessary. Aha. So enter output clock frequency. Let me try uh, 200 megs. All right. It can do that. 500 megs it can also do, but I'm pretty... I think if you try to implement above 300 megahertz even on the FPGA, you'll get a fitter error. Okay, you can try. 200, 200 should work. Let's try. Okay. Um, next, next, next. Uh, okay, that's it. 50 megahertz comes in, 200 megahertz goes out. That's simple, right? Next. And then what are all the files? It generates all the necessary files. And you'll see a QIP file added. Uh, QIP stands for Quartus Intellectual Property. You can look at a you can ask it to instantiate, uh, or you can ask it to make a component instantiation VHDL file. It's not necessary because if you go into the VHDL file and if you search for the entity statement, there it is. You, usually when the associated core, this is called as a core, okay? That you instantiate. When it's more complicated, usually the entity is not found at the top of the file. It's found somewhere right smack in the middle. So I always search for it. So here is the entity declaration. Copy it. Make a component out of it. Right. This is the top level. And what I usually do is I send the signal tap clock out to an LED just to make sure it's like, quote unquote, working, right? So, sampling. Signal tap, 200 megahertz clock instance is an instance of signal tap clock. So a reset, I already have an active high reset. It's called reset. In clock is clock underscore 50. So now what I'm going to do, uh, actually, let me do this. Signal tap, 200 megahertz clock instance. Um, let me do this. And clock buffer, OK? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send in a 50 megahertz clock. I'm going to get two clocks out. One is the 200 megahertz signal tap clock. The other is a 50 megahertz clock, but it's buffered, right? So the idea is the second 50 megahertz clock I'm going to use to clock all my FSMs. It's not a good idea to put this 50 megahertz clock directly into your FSMs because it increases loading on the clock line, which can lead to clock skew, right? All right, so let's let me close signal tap for now. Uh, let me go back into the mega wizard and edit it. Edit. Oh, there's my signal tap PLL VHD. Give it some time to start up. Okay, input is 50 megahertz. Uh, let's C0 be 200 megahertz. Use this clock. C1 is my buffer. So this is 50 megahertz, OK? So this C1, I'm going to send it to my other modules. And you should always do this. You should always buffer your clocks for any of your practical designs, OK? And almost all FP, well, all FPGAs made in the 21st century have PLLs on them, right? So it's going to ask me to overwrite it. Yes, it's been overwritten. Let me close the file and open it again. And there it is. There's an extra C1. So component, and I can't spell. Ah. 
end component. Okay. So let me go back up here. Where's my signals? There the signal reset. Clock 50 megahertz. Okay. What? Yeah. All right. So end component is that good? And I think I'm missing. No, I'm not missing a semicolon. There. Okay. And going back here, C0. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna send it to LEDG. Which one? Zero, four, one, two, three, four. LEDG five. Okay. And C1. I'm gonna make it my clock 50 megahertz. Okay. So looking good. And I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna call this clock 50 megahertz. Yes. There you go. And this one too. Okay, there it is. So clocks are buffered. I have a signal tap clock. So what I'm going to do is when I choose my clock for signal tap, I'm going to choose LED G5. All right. Let's let's do this. Let's try to declare another signal. It's not very instructive when somebody looks at your signal tap. So let's see uh, clock signal tap 200 megahertz. Clock signal tap 200 megahertz. Now the issue might be here that Quartus might synthesize away this signal and directly connect LED G0 to the output of the to C0. We'll see what it does. Okay. There is an there is a keyword called keep that you can use to prevent Quartus from removing the signal, but I'm not gonna do that. All right, let's just oops. Let's see what it does. Clock, signal, tap, 200 megs. All right. Now let's do a quick analysis and synthesis to make sure we don't have any syntax errors, and then we'll do signal time. I don't need the PLL. And of course, you can use signal tap anytime, but you need the FPGA board, right? Uh, so come on. All right, looking good, okay. So I got some warnings, let's see what they are. Uh, yeah, fine, whatever, okay. Can be safely ignored. Let's look at the RTL view. All right, there's my clock buffer, okay. If you go in, PLL, and that, that's it. Like in the sense, you can see, I can't go in any further. Cyclone 2 PLL, it's a Face lock, but there are four of them on your FPGA board, and you can see that when you look at the compilation report. Okay, well, not here once you fit the design. So let's fit the design. Uh, well, as it's fitting, a point about signal tap you don't have incremental compilation because you have the web edition. That means, let's say you add a signal, you're probing a bunch of signals, and you realize. I don't have a signal and I want to add it, okay? Then you have to resynthesize the entire design. So as you work on your practical projects, you can't keep adding a new signal every time you forget it. It'll take too long right, with signal tap, even with incremental compilation. Right. All right. Okay, so now let's do signal tap. Go to tools, signal tap logic analyzer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose our clock, okay? So signal configuration under the here, click on this dot, 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 list all nodes, okay? And what the, have they changed this since last time? Here? Yeah, I know. It's all, always a star. This one? Oh, yeah, thank you. So they did change it. All right. So you have an option of looking at what kind of nodes you want. All right. Post fitting is the default because post fitting means these are the nodes 
that did not get synthesized away by the synthesizer. Is that clear? Now, an easy way, what I do is I say, show me all pins, okay? However, let's say you add this and in signal tap here, either in the data window, when you, at the list of nodes, if you see it in red, that means it has been synthesized away and you can't really see it. Is that clear? In red means caution, right? So let me do, let's see if, uh, I'm just gonna use LED G5, right? Because I know that's not synthesized away. Did I send the clock to G5? Well, let's just check. I think I did. Yeah, G5, all right. So there's the clock. Okay, clock's in, all right. Now, we have to look at what nodes you want to see. So let's double click. And again, it's in, well, in pre-synthesis. I usually, um, let's look at uh, post-fitting. Okay, registers. Most fitting, uh, single pulse generator instance. There's only current state. Okay, let's just look at current state, just for the hell of it, all right? Uh, let's see. Uh, signal tap two, post fitting. Uh, let's see if it's under here. Was it single pulse generator? Pulse out, okay? Let's look at that. So this is a register. I mean, you can find the same thing under here. But yeah, so whatever option is appropriate, use that. So let's look at these two. Do you want uh, blah, 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 since you're adding post fitting nodes, yeah, fine, whatever, okay? There. So I've added my clock. So signal tap is a logic analyzer, right? Have you, have you used the logic analyzers that are on your scope? Like the uh, 16, know, 16 bits? Yeah, so you need clock. The frequency of the clock in your logic analyzer with the HP 54645 is what? You know what the frequency is? 100 megahertz, okay. It's 100 megs. Uh, and then you have to select the nodes you want to see. Yes, same idea here. And now you have to choose your trigger. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna look at pulse out. So I, I wanna trigger when it goes from low to high, okay? So, and then here it's rising edge. The good news is all of that doesn't get recorded. So, because <laughs> it's a gaming headset. All right, so that's your trigger, okay? Something very important about signal tap, you can't see the sampling clock, just the way it is, right? So just remember what the frequency is, and I'll show you here in the data, actually we can do it right now, right click on this, go to time units, so it was 200 megs, uh, so it's how much is that, four, Five nanos, yes, 200 megs is five nanos. It's, okay, 50 megahertz is 20 nanoseconds, yes. Uh, so 200 megahertz is four times that. That means the period should be one fourth of 20 nanoseconds, which is five nanoseconds, that's right, okay? So here it is. And that's what, so this is a step I, I usually follow, okay? Clock, nodes, trigger, um, select appropriate time base. You, you don't want to look at sample numbers, right? It doesn't make any sense. And then based on the time scale I have here, I can adjust the amount of sample depth, okay? And you can try to go up to like 128K, but you're not going to fit the design. I'm pretty sure. You don't have that much memory on the Cyclone 2, on chip, okay? Again, Altair is working on technology which will allow signal tap to go off chip memory and also send data, for example, through ethernet. I don't think it's out in 13.0, you can try. They didn't tell me when they're getting it out. But. Okay, so is this clear? All right, so everything's good. So let's save this. Uh, let's see, uh, signal tap. It's, you can't give any more descriptive name if you're STP. Do you want to enable signal tap for the project? Yes, please do, okay. So everything's added, ready to go. But now you can see, you have to resynthesize, okay? Till fitter. You don't use the programmer. You use signal tap to download the design. Because you're gonna communicate to the design through signal tap. So let me just fit it. So when I run fit, it's going to run analysis and synthesis. And well, let me power on the board. 
And if this hopefully works, we're done with uh, today's lecture in the sense, I don't know if I told you today's lecture was going to be short. Okay. And you have an option of using single tap, ideally and or model sim. Sorry, single tap and model sim, but you don't have time to do that. Uh, in the sense, uh, you have other classes and stuff. So depending on what you want to use, de depending on the project, you want to use either model sim or single tap. For example, for next week, uh, you'll do, when we do the PS2 case study, when we start that, you want to use signal tap because that way you can, when you plug in a keyboard, you can actually see the keyboard responding or not. You can't see that in model sim because you don't have a, a keyboard core that you can simulate. You can make one. Is that clear? But it's unnecessary. Why? You have signal tap. And the keyboard core, it's max, I forgot what the clock rate for PS2 is. Do you remember? What's the range of clock rates? It's in the hundreds of kilohertz max. Okay, It's not that fast. So you can definitely debug nicely the PS2 core using signal tap. And that's what I recommend. Right? Let's say you're using the NIOS processor. You don't want to do signal tap. You want to do model sim. Because okay? you'll have a lot of signals. And it's not going to fit, most likely. Okay, so looking good. Uh, so let's go back into signal tap, or you can double click on this file. Okay, so now let me stick the board in and power it up. It's got to be downloaded, and hopefully my projector doesn't die, because if I touch it wrongly, it dies. All right, looking good. Okay, oh, died. <laughs> okay, well, we have time. What's oh, back? Well, look at that. All right, so yeah, let me pause that. Okay, so uh, hardware, let's set it up. There it is. Okay, USB blaster, directed it, close. All right, so it, it, all the communication blue LED will light up. Okay, SOF file. It's under output files. What? Oh, I didn't generate the programming file. Never mind. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, save changes. So whenever it says this, what I do is I close signal tap. Uh, process is okay. Come on, come on. So I close signal tap and I start again. Right. Well, I forgot that we are not going to use the programmer, but we have to generate the programming file. So let's do that. Actually, what we could have done, okay, let me get into single tap. I have a global reset, yes, key zero. I could have triggered on that. Whatever, right? So simple so fsm.sof, okay? So compile project to continue. I did compile project. Right? So what I usually do is I hold down reset, okay? And then I download the file. This is why, there's another reason why you need Global reset. Yeah, okay? I did compile the project. Why is it complaining? So run the design has changed. See, do you wish to recompile before running the logic analyzer? Uh, yeah. So it, see, it closed signal. Close this. Okay. So this is the issue with signal tap. Okay. So whenever you change even something little, you have to recompile it, and this will get annoying pretty quickly. No, it has to be a clock. Oh, you mean keys to trigger signal type? Yeah, you can use any signal to sig trigger, just as in a practical logic analyzer. Um, but Looking at my board, well, let me download the design. I'm not seeing LED G5 lighting up, okay? So my concern is this 200 megahertz is really not coming out. It's, it should not be too fast. I know you can go to 300. If not, I'll get back down to 100 megahertz. I know that works, okay? Well, let's see. Uh, 
reset clock 50. Uses memory blocks, yes. Uh, hold on, let me. Okay, I can't use the Netless viewer yet. Let me just check if this is actually going out in the RTL viewer because I don't see it on my board. Let it finish. Okay, what are these warnings? Ignored. Uh oh what is this digital performance that's fine uh, so this warning is okay for now because we don't have uh, SDC file it's basically saying that this is a clock and you're directly feeding it to a pin so there might be jitter on the clock that's okay All right uh -uh -uh. Again, you'll run into timing problems when you deal with designs that are running at really high frequency and your FPGA is getting very full, right? If not, you really won't run into setup time, hold time issues. All right, so that's done. Let me just check one thing. Is this going out or not? Yeah, it's going out there. So it didn't get synthesized away. That's good, but then why don't I see it? Oh, let's find out. Well, JTAC configuration. Okay, I'm holding down reset. It's saying ready to acquire, yes? So acquisition in progress. Now it's waiting for the trigger. I'm hold, again, I'm holding down reset. Let it go. And this was the issue I was worried about. It's still saying waiting for trigger because it can't find the clock, okay? My LED G5 is not lighting up. So that shows that the clock's not coming out. So then what it could be is this frequency is too high. So nothing, there's no data. Right? So let's go back in here. Uh, no, let's modify. What I'm gonna do, let's try this again. Mega wizard. I'm gonna get this down to 100 megs. So I know that works. Mm -mm -mm. It should work. Mm. Okay. So next, 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 uh, 100. Okay. Next, well, I can just hit finish. Yes, finish. Okay. So this is single tap, 100 mags, 100 mags, 100 mags. Where's my signals? There it is. 100 mags. All right, let's try this again. And hopefully, I'm just actually, I'm going to actually download the SOF file and check if my LED lights up. So it's always a good uh, rule of thumb to follow. Make sure you're actually getting a clock. Unless LED G5 is not working, which I don't think is true. Huh? Your keys are active low. The issue that were, the question that was raised is, is never triggers on a key. Okay. So it, it, well, I have gotten it to trigger on a key. So. Well, let's see first, let's get the clock out. I mean, I should see the LED just lit up, okay, because it's running too fast. It's running at 10 nanos and you can't see that. See, I don't think I did, uh, yeah, this should be standard. It could also be the reason why the 200 megahertz clock is not working is because I have an extra 50 megahertz clock. Because I've played around with this. I've gone up to 300 megahertz on the FPG and I know. Ooh, I've gone up only up to 300 megahertz on the FPG. I've never sent it out to an LED. 
Maybe it can't be. It can't come out of the FPGA. Well, let's find out. I know about 300 megahertz. It won't fit on the FPGA. It will, it will complain. Have I ever tried the 100 megahertz clock outside the FPJ? Well, let's find out. Uh, auto detect. Uh, EP2C20 is what I want. Ah, okay, not far. Alright, I don't need that. Delete. It automatically added the FPGA. Let's hit start. Yeah, I can see LED G5. Ah, oh, this. Okay. So if you notice LED G5, it's barely lit up. Okay. That's telling me there is a loading issue for the clock going outside to the LED. Okay. That means there's probably too much clock skew on the FPGA itself. You could ask, hey, Bart, why should we even send it out to an LED? It's because if you don't drive this output, uh, this signal will get synthesized away because Quartus will say you're not driving anything you're not using it however now i think about it this is actually coming from the output of a pll so perhaps it will not get synthesized away right so bottom line is let's try this let's see if we do get a clock right if we don't get a clock the next thing what i'm going to do is i'm not going to drive this to an led and see what happens let's see if Quartus keeps it okay that's this is very interesting so let's say we can't get the sampling clock to go at 100 megahertz right that implies you really cannot see the 50 nanoseconds pulse using signal time. What you have to do is send the pulse to a GPI open if you really want to verify timing and look at it on an external logic analyzer. Is that clear? It's because I need a sampling clock that's at least 100 megahertz, twice the frequency of the maximum clock in your design. Make sense? You can't use a lower fre frequency lower than 100 megahertz. It won't. There's it violates the nyquist and sampling theorem. Right? You heard of the nyquist and sampling theorem? Okay, so let's close this. Where is our friend? Uh, no. Signal tap. Come on, man. All right, here we go. Let's download. Okay. So ready to acquire. Holding down reset. Waiting for trigger. No. So you can't see the clock. Okay. So there's only one more thing we can try. And this is the first time I'm actually doing this. I'm trying to look at the 50 nanosecond pulse in signal tap. I didn't realize this could be an issue. Well, only one more thing. All right. Hmm? Yeah, so when I hold down reset, the pulse is not... Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, hold on, hold on. So let's do this. Okay, control Z. All right. So the issue here, I just realized, is okay. Let's look at this. I mean, okay. so my trigger is when the pulse goes from low to high. Yes, but that'll only happen if my input is a one. I forgot my input is on switch two. Okay, so let me try this. Let me make switch two high yes so now the pulse should come if it still doesn't come then we'll remove this clock constraint and see right so if this works go back to a 200 megahertz clock so this is how you play with this thing right so let me just synthesize it again you see the problem so i was triggering on the pulse okay the pulse will just get will get generated when the input is a one and the input depends on sw2 okay my SW2 was zero, so my pulse will never come. Now I put my SW2 to a one to avoid debouncing issues. Is that clear? So let's try this again. But I'm concerned about this uh, clock. It should be brightly lit. My LED is barely lit. So that's not so this clock is getting skewed pretty badly. That's what it looks like. 
Was that your question, Connor, or the trigger question? Or? Yeah, I, I just didn't think you were triggering on the reset. No, I wasn't triggering on the reset. That's fine. I could trigger on the reset. I was triggering on pulse out. But thanks to your question, I realized my pulse out is always zero because my SW2 was down. Right now, my SW2 is up, so it should generate at least one pulse. No, exactly one pulse. So let's see. Ah, where did I click on time question? Oh, that's okay. So as you can see, well, the lecture time is almost up, and this is the issue with signal time, right? Unless you get it, it takes some time to get it working. Uh, maybe like 20 minutes. But once you get it working, let's say you have to add new signals, you have to resynthesize this design again and again. Initial, like I said, this is the first time I'm doing this, but let's say next week you're going to do the PS2 using signal tap. I encourage you to do that. Once you get the hang of it, the PS2 design can be debugged very nicely using signal tap. I recommend you use signal tap for the PS2 lab next week. For your counters and stuff, like for lab one, uh, don't use signal tap, use model sim. Not recommended. was successful but I clicked on time quest generate programming file yeah that's pretty quick it should be so timing constraints are not satisfied that's why this is in red but that's okay sorry Yeah, it's one out of four. It's just using one PLO. Right now, where's my signal tap? Is it open or closed? We close this and open it again. All right, let's try this once more. So, come on, waiting for JTAG. Okay. I don't trust this thing. So, reset held down, downloading. We are ready to acquire. No. Oh, there it is. Okay, never mind. So that was the issue. I was stupid enough and not uh, triggering it at all. So there's my pulse. Yes. How do you know it's uh, one clock cycle wide? Well, let's change the time units. It's 10 nanos now. Remember, I reduced the frequency. Uh, oh, wait. Exactly one clock cycle. This is timing, well, I don't want to say it's timing closed, but pretty close, right? Okay? So any questions on signal tap? Again, clock, make sure your frequency is at least twice the max frequency in your design. Signals, trigger enable, you, get, you, can, you have a lot of things you can do, right? You can have advanced trigger conditions you can do and trigger this and that, okay? Actually, another rule of thumb, what I do, is to avoid reset issues with the clock. I didn't do it for this design. You don't have to do this. I basically make a separate PLL that's always, it's not, there's no reset for it. It's always running. So the signal tap two, so the signal tap clock is always running. You don't have to do that. But I do that to avoid like um, reset issues. Because it is your logic analyzer clock. It should always run. Okay. Oh, the reset? So Connor is saying he ran into problems with when he, this clock had reset. That is, this logic analyzer clock only starts after reset. So you could run into problems with that. As a rule of thumb, what I do is I have a separate PLL whose A reset input is zero. That is, the moment you download it, it starts running. And that's how a logic analyzer should be. Right. I was running. So is this clear? So again, for lab one, I don't recommend you use single tab. It's overkill. You use model sim. For lab 2, which is the PS2 keyboard interface, next week you're going to start PS2 mouse interface in lecture. You're going to be doing the keyboard. I highly recommend. In fact, don't use model sim. Right? Use signal time. Highly recommend it. Or uh, in one final thing, right? you can actually, this is, we looked at the register. That's why you're seeing this in binary. So let me zoom. You're seeing this state in binary. You can actually see this as a state mnemonic. Okay? And the way you do that is like if you go in here, you add the appropriate node. Like here. here, add state machine nodes. Okay? 
Is that clear? So if you add state machine node instead of adding uh, nodes, so nodes is just binary. If you add state machine nodes, you can actually see the state names. Any questions? So again, for next week's uh, lab, I highly, highly recommend you use signal tab. Again, signal tab, no model sim. Not recommended. You could. There are some people who did both. But yeah. No, but with model sim, you can. Sorry, the question that was asked was, is there a way you can look at analog signals in signal tab? I don't think. No, no, I take it back. I think you can. Um, let's see. I think you can. So in, the way you do that in model sim is you right click on, you select a signal there, right click on it, and bus display format here. So yes, you can. Like in the sense, you look at it as a, uh, like sign decimal. Right, and the appropriate signal will be analog. Yes, you can. In this case, these signals are be obtained as register outputs. They're digital. That's why these are all grayed out. Okay. So yeah, play around with signal tap. All right. So that's it. See you next week.